Hey there, this is Jordan Toronto with Discover Me TV, and today I'm so excited to bring you my interview with Paul Racy, who was just nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in the film Sound of Metal. Jordan Toronto, yeah. how are you? Paul oh, Racy, awesome. Oh, it's really, really nice to meet you. You've been nice to meet you. Over the screens. My uh, YouTube channel is called Discover Me TV. As I hear about your story and I've watched other interviews, is that, you know, after 30 years of being here now, uh, you've been discovered. You've been here all along doing your thing. It's certainly gratifying to, to have this kind of recognition uh, for something I've been doing for so long, but uh, I don't enjoy it any more than I ever have. I mean, for the past 40 years, I've enjoyed being an artist. Yeah. and always fo focused on that. And even if I had no money, the people I was working with was what made me want to live yeah. and, 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 and get more of that zest for life. So yeah. if all of that wasn't there in the first place, then any recognition doesn't really hold that much water for you if you haven't been getting fulfilled by it all along, all of this time, right? Like, no, I've never had any of that. So this, this is nice, sure. but I, I want to keep on working. Right. At my craft. Yes. Okay. That's because that's when I'm really alive. Uh, that's what you know. If I if I if I can't do that, then I can't sleep at night. I, I can't be happy. So that's hopefully look, there, that. I, I, there's going to be more work as we go along. I, I, and I'm so lucky, so blessed, so grateful that I'm able to still do music, yes. and still do acting, yes. and uh, still be in love with my wife. You know. So, <laughs> so, so, I'm, and those are the on. things you just want to keep doing always. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I really appreciate that. No, that 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 makes a lot of sense. And it's just like, yeah. So then this is fun to have like something that's a cherry on top of all of that. But big, the, the big point that has been, <laughs> what'd you say? I said it's a big cherry. A big, big cherry. cherry on top. That's awesome. Well, yeah. good. I'm glad you're enjoying that big cherry on top. <laughs> you've also been enjoying the whole... I don't know, milkshake along the way or whatever this, my weird little analogy is. Yeah, well, there's a lot of similarities between what I've experienced and what this guy does in the film, yeah. except I'm not deaf. Right. But um, I grew up in the deaf community. Right. And you're a child, both deaf. your parents are, uh, are deaf, but I now I remember that the story that your mom lost her hearing at five, and so she right. does remember music, right? Oh, yeah, she, yeah. Well, they're past now, both of them. Uh, right. But yeah, she... Lost it at five, so she uh, remembered a lot of what she had heard, and that kind of uh, stuck with her for, yeah, you know, like as opposed to my father, who was deaf and at about six months old, spinal meningitis, and uh, he didn't care. He was happy with who he was, but my mom was a little bit of a, a little bit of tortured by the fact that she had not uh, had music anymore. Well, I think that's interesting. That notion of loss. I mean, when we identify with something and then see it as a loss, it's an incredibly different experience, right? When some, uh, as opposed to something just being a part of who you are. Well, you're a vocalist, so you know more than a lot of other people, or just a musician too. If you, it's hard to uh, not like music, isn't it? It's hard to not have music as part of your life if you're able-bodied or a hearing person like yourself and myself. Anything that's taken, if you have something, you enjoy it, and then it's stripped away, it's a little difficult to deal with. It takes an extraordinary person, I think, to find uh, the, find peace with that. It's possible, but it's the extraordinary person that can do that. My father doesn't re or didn't remember hearing. So I asked him, you know, one time, do you want one of them cochlear implants? You could hear something. He's like, no, I I don't want that. I'm I'm happy the way I am. And so he was peaceful. And, and was he profoundly deaf? Like, was he in, I mean, was Deaf that, as a post. Yeah. Deaf as a post. So, so that, that sort of, uh, what I think is so interesting and so incredibly hard for yet, like you said, any hearing person, anyone who has had uh, something as part of their life experience and then to lose it. I think what Joe is trying to teach Ruben when he's, you know, asking him to sit in that room and just sit. And then if you can't sit anymore, right. Uh, and then sit. Um, I think his whole, I mean, as I can only imagine, as you know, from my own experience, 
he has a need, he's a need for the sound and a need for how he felt known before, right? And so to be known in the silence as opposed to sort of known by the noise you're used to, that's, like you said, that's an incredibly rare person and an incredibly rare experience to be able to have, I guess. But that's what Joe was yeah. challenging him to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, uh, I mean, he wants, he's an addict and that's why he wants it to go back, he wants to fix it. It wants to go back to the way life is. Yeah. That's not the way it works for you sometimes. So, uh, but his 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 uh, behavior is very, like Joe Joe tells him at the end. There, you look, and you sound like an addict, and that's something that. And I love Riz's response to me, or rather Ruben, but yeah. Riz is the actor. He he, uh, he he goes, oh no no, that's not, such denial, you know, and just yeah. no. I want it to be like it was before. That's that's the tragedy. That's the tragic part of the whole thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it hurts. Yeah. And I think I heard you talking about in another interview. Um, that day happened to be a really kind of gloomy, rainy day when you guys were filming that, and you just said like, just somehow like the feel, the vibe on the set was just it was so right for that that moment, huh? Couldn't have been more perfect because every day up until that point was bright and sunny beautiful weather uh, in a suburb of Boston. Ipswich is a farmland up in a suburb of Boston. And all of that last day we're shooting and it's raining. Where did that come from? And so that, that, developed, that the feeling developed and all the deaf actors had wrapped the day before. They were gone. So the house was empty. It was just Riz and I and the crew. And there was a feeling of, oh, this is our last time. This was a goodbye. This is a, a goodbye scene between Riz and I as uh, actors and Ruben and Joe, the characters. Yeah. And uh, so that was looming in there and it was gloomy and drizzly and wet. And we're sitting at this kitchen table and I look over in the corner of my eye. Oh, there's my dog, Sheila. I look over in the corner of my eye and there was the director, uh, Darius, just weeping, oh. weeping. After, and, so I, I, either something was very right or something's very wrong, you know, but uh, it was incredibly, I have to say it was incredibly powerful being uh, acting with Riz Ahmed in that, that morning. It was incredible. And I think there's something to the fact that, you know, what Joe was trying to teach as I was watching the movie and your character was telling, you know, telling Ruben to sit and to sit and then, right, I was like, oh my gosh, this is something I think he's telling me right now. And I just thought, I think that's what audiences are responding to right now. I think we all yeah. have like that moment. We're like, we know, we know, I think we know sort of in us that, that we become kind of addicted to life's noise and, and to what we're used to being and what we've had. Maybe it's time to, you know, just uh, not be so fixated on what you are so used to. Just expand your consciousness to uh, take the blinders off and see that there are other things out there. Yes. You occupy your time. Joe is so classically uh, a 12 stepper. In, in my journey, I've seen so many Joes, leaders, sponsors of addicts. And that's just one typical exercise that I love the fact Darius wrote that into the script that one exercise of sitting and then writing until you, uh, if you can't sit, then write, write, and write. If you can't, and that stops them just so you can sit again. Yeah. Classic, it's just classic. I really just so, so appreciated your performance. And it, it just felt that. like you spoke to me. I don't know if you have um, anybody that you think I might not know, but that you think is a fantastic artist, actor, author, uh, musician, anybody that you might think you should go out and discover this person, Jordan. Well, you, you might have a little different taste than me, so I don't know if they are. <laughs> are my tastes are a little bit different than yours. Well, my daughter uh, is a uh, budding uh, musician. She's uh, an indie artist. Now, I'll give you two artists that I really love, but one that you might enjoy more is my daughter, who's like, she's 24. Yeah. She's in an indie band. She's in a band called It's Butter. It's Butter. You can look it up online. She's got tons of music. She's... Uh, a young woman who has uh, uh, a bass player and a drummer, just yeah. the three of them. Yeah. And I think she's fantastic. I love her. Uh, 
well, not because she's my daughter, but yeah, also you love her for that. She's a great musician, and I love the stuff she writes about. She writes about her own experiences and everything. Now, who do I uh, tend to look at? I like guys that have gone through the fire, like myself, and uh, I love Iggy Pop. I've always loved Iggy Pop. I love his raw truthfulness and his uh, outlook on performing. He's he's hilarious. He has a sense of humor. And I like guys that perform with a sense of humor that don't take themselves too seriously. Yeah. You know, the band that I'm in right now is a, a, a Black Sabbath tribute band. We're called Hands of Doom. And I, I love being in a rock band because there's nothing that's, you know, it's only rock and roll and I like it. There's nothing too serious about it. Let's, you know, don't take myself too seriously. That's why, you know, a lot of people, they, when they, they go, wow, and so you're an actor. Yeah, you know what? It's not that hard. <laughs> if you work at a craft for many, many, many years and you don't get good at it, then you should stop doing it, I think. You know? It's a good point. So it's been so many years and so many acting teachers I've had and so many plays and actors I've worked with that you just learn stuff along the way. Yeah. Or if, I'm sure you've taken, like, there are mastery classes you can take, yeah. you know, I did all that stuff. I did all that stuff. Never yeah. stopped. Yeah. But, but yeah, I love your question about artists. Look, I, I love discovering, I still love discovering young, new artists that are crazy, that are just open. Yeah. And I also love watching, like I said, you know, the Iggy's, yeah. the uh, Ozzy's, the guys that have been through the fire. Because those kids, you're going to go through the fire too, you know. Yeah, right, so right, right. If you're good now, you're going to be 10 times, 50 times good when you get through that fire. So you just got to keep on doing it. I love that. Got a lot of fire to go through. Got a lot of fire to go through. Yeah. So that's that's great. Oh yeah, that's that's inspiring. That's very cool. So it is. It's so fun to look at people at all different um, places in in their journey and and mm -hmm. admire them for wherever they are. Right. But I'm so excited. I'm going to go back and check out more of her stuff because. Uh... I'm telling you, her music, her music is really cool. I I don't know. It uh, it it helps me get in touch with how I felt when I was 24. You know, mm -hmm. she's talking about things. Oh, I remember that. I love that. Well, I'm gonna check out, it's butter. Yeah, is that right? That's it's butter. butter. It's, it's butter. butter. That's a great yeah. name, I love it. And yours is? Hands of Doom. Hands of Doom. Yes, yeah. and we do the, we do the Yeah, we do the whole sign. show in sign language. The yeah. entire show too, right? Every That's show we have like 40 deaf people show up. It's so wonderful. Well, the best part is watching the two cultures in front of me on the dance floor, these clubs we play come together. There's yeah. deaf people and hearing people that have never met each other. And they're all like, you know, gesturing and meeting each other. And uh, it's kind of wild. That's so cool. And that's something that, that this movie is doing too, right? It's bringing people to be like, everyone can experience it together, which I really think is a really beautiful thing. Thank you so no much problem. for talking to me. I really appreciate that. Pleasure to meet you, Jordan. I wish you a lot of luck in your singing career and yeah. acting and everything you're doing. Thank you Wonderful. so much. Yeah, oh, I really, I yeah, I really admire you, and I'm I'm so glad we got to have this conversation. Me too. Me too. You have a great day. You too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>